Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and here with me are the book writers of the new musical Some Like It Hot, Matthew Lopez and Amber Ruffin. And, you know, we often hear about- Hey, Amber. I'm oh, sorry I didn't interrupt you, oh. Sam, but hi, Amber. No worries. Oh, hi, Matthew. <laughs> How's LA? Nice. How's London? Cold and rainy. Fun. <laughs> And I'm here Sorry. in New York where we're having a heat wave in April. So we have the whole spectrum. Yeah, we really um, do. Yeah, but uh, you know, we normally hear about writing partners who have worked together for so long uh, and have this deep history. I feel like it's a different case for you. So I'm, I'm wondering how did you establish kind of combining your own voices in this writing process? We both have really hard feelings to hurt. So it didn't, we didn't have to do any tiptoeing. I think everybody has to do some bit of tiptoeing when they work with a new this or that, but we're both rowdy and silly. So it didn't, mm -hmm. I think it was pretty clear. You could just say exactly what you wanted and it would be fine. Yeah, this is garbage came out of, out of our mouth a lot. <laughs> this is Sorry. garbage. Uh, no, I think, yeah, Amber's right. It's like, um, especially working with someone like Amber who comes from the, the comedy writing world and from television comedy writing in particular. And, and my my very narrow experience with television writing compared to hers, I, I, I knew that I was working with someone that you could just say, that's not, that's, no, that's, I don't, I don't think so. Or probably more fruitfully, which is really sort of, the answer is is it's always like yeah but can we do better and that's ultimately like you know it's good enough but let's try to do better um but yeah no no it's it, it hard to hurt each other's feelings i mean well we tried too didn't we ever <laughs> <laughs> well it Boy, seems we, like you uh, have we even started yeah. to comment on each other's clothing which really got nasty that that was when we started like when we started like mm, ah mm. that that shirt again interesting say it twice in one week huh or when i started to like really really you know pick on you for your eating habits like you're like you know the five-year-old palate you have um which is i true. started this zoom eating a string cheese so you know <laughs> you that did life. you were eating a string cheese so it's hard to hurt each other's feelings yeah <laughs> well it feels like you you know within that you had a pretty big task ahead of you because while some like a hut is adapted from you know the classic mgm musical this this stage version feels like a, a reinvention in many ways um so how did you both approach that to to tell it through a modern lens what was the most important aspect there go oh, i'm well i just i just thought it is beautiful that some like it hot is such a warm memory for so many people. Freaking everybody was sitting around with their grandpa and while he's pointing at the TV talking about movies used to mean something and stuff. So that's great. And we love that. And we wanted to capture that vibe. And we wanted people to feel that way again. And we wanted the people who feel that way to be a much bigger audience. Like we wanted people to feel like they were being represented. We wanted people to feel like they were looking at, you know, a little bit of a realer world. Um, and we wanted to make sure that people came in however they were coming in, but left happy. <laughs> and we did it. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that that's, I think one, something you said earlier, uh, uh, in another conversation, Amber, was that uh, it feels like something that uh, that t people in their 20s and 30s can watch with their grandparents, their parents, and their grandparents, and everybody feels fed by it. Um, and that for us was like one of the goals uh, to, to be able to take. I mean, the other thing, too, that I think was so liberating about it is the movie is so perfect and so great in, in, in as a comedy. Uh, and, and, you know, honestly, it's something that was, um, it was ahead of its time uh, at the time that it was made, it, you know, it was, it was pretty radical at the time. And, and what was 
yesterday's ahead of its time is today's behind the time. And I think that we had, but because as a comedy, it's so perfect. There was just like the, the chance of failure was so great that we, we figured, well, let's just try because we're probably going to fail and great. And let's see how far we can get before the failure happens. And I think because we had that spirit of just sort of like, we can't lose here because the worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to be bad and no one will care. Uh, so we just like, we just there was no there were no hang-ups about oh is it good is it is it as good as it is as, you know we just sort of like gave ourselves a freedom to just sort of take take it and make it our own and that was I think when you're doing an adaptation especially something as iconic as that I think you get tied up in knots about are you honoring it are you you know all that stuff and we just sort of like yeah, we just gave ourselves permission to fail. And and um, and in giving that ourselves that permission, I think that we also just sort of like had a better chance of achieving our goals that we had for it. I think what Matthew's trying to say is permission to fail is permission to succeed. Ooh, Thanks, Amber, well done, like it, put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why they're the writers. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I, I would say one of the, the biggest kind of updates you had in terms of of bringing it into today um, when you're talking about, you know, something progressive at that time is today is kind of past uh, is the character of Daphne goes on, uh, starts a, a journey discovering their true gender identity, which we have in today's world so much more nuanced language around that didn't really exist, you know, in the 30s where this musical set, did that make that hard to sort of chart that character? What was that journey like writing that? It it just made sense to do that. I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, we sort of like, that was one of the easiest decisions to make about the show, I think, because it, it just felt like, it, it felt like that was the natural progression of, of the story if we were going to take it and 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 update it. I I I I sort of when I started when I approached you know the idea of even doing the job, it was kind of like, well, if we're not going to do that, then there's no point in doing it. You know? Um, and so it it really was the easiest decision. It was it was a decision around which we it was a decision that we took very seriously, and it was a decision that we had lots of conversations about, but it was never whether we should or shouldn't attempt this it was always like well obviously if you're going to do something like it hot in the 21st century this is how this is how we should we should approach it um and then I think the gift that we got as writers too so that was just like the first sort of mandate on that it's just sort of like let's 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 take this opportunity to use this musical as an as a as a chance to tell that story instead of just sort of taking some like it hot and doing it again let's use the vehicle as a, as an opportunity to tell that particular story. We got very lucky with, with Jay. And like all writing for theater is theoretical until you get it on its feet, until it's in, it's in an actor's voice. And when, when Jay joined the, the project, it, it, the Daphne, just Daphne came alive. And, and then we spent, much of the rest of the time sort of chasing after Jay. Is that, is that, does that sound accurate to you, Amber? Yeah, we were very lucky in getting Jay because we knew that if it was, I mean, we knew we were in a dicey area, but we knew that if we wrote something that was true for Jay, then we were not telling a lie. So then mm. really we're like, oh, wow we have like a shortcut, you know, to what would be the, uh, um, what would be the most true thing for the character. You know, we can write it, watch Jay say it and be like, oh, what's weird about this? And then Jay will be like, well, this, that, and this, you know, but most of the time Jay was like, this is it. Um, so we were really lucky. Yeah, yeah. I think so much of the comedy too fits these actors to a T. Like Natasha Yvette Williams is sort of the queen of these like amazing zingers uh, and one-liners and, and looks. So how much 
how much of that shifts when you get the final cast? How much do you say, oh, I know what exactly what to do for this person? A lot. A lot, a lot of people will show you who they are. Like Jay was really generous in being like, this is the joke that you wrote. <laughs> you know, and, and you'd be like, huh, I see. I see. I see. I, that can do better. You know, and sometimes a, a <laughs> actor will, like, like Jay will be like, this is the line that you wrote. Isn't it the line you wrote? And you're like, oh, that's the structure of the joke. And that's because you say it like that in this moment. And then you, you know, you fix it according to the vibe of them and the scene at that moment. But yeah, Natasha's the king of that shit. I mean, baby. Oh, 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 oh. She's yeah. a Tommy gun. She's a Tommy yeah. gun. She's she's uh, she's so I mean, she's she can deliver a joke the way she can she can scat in a song. She 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 approaches, and maybe maybe there is something connected to the fact that she's such an amazing singer. Uh, she approaches, uh, whether she realizes or not, she approaches she approaches the role musically, and she approaches the you know the delivery of it. And then you've got Kevin, who's just like uh, a, a human slinky, and and like just and with Kevin, it was like everything that Osgood was on paper remained true and didn't change all that much at all. And Kevin had this amazing ability to just simply like adapt to, to Osgood and form himself around the words on the page. And I remember there just being very little changes because Kevin just sort of like took it, swallowed it whole and like, and 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 made it so you had a bunch of different actors with a bunch of different skill sets who uh uh some of them you wrote for because you needed to marry the character to the actor some of them you wrote for because you're like oh we can do better and some of them you're like oh wow we don't need to touch this this is we're, we're already in good hands here no uh, we're blessed we're absolutely blessed by this cast yeah i also feel like sometimes it it's difficult, you know, I, I often consider the book of a musical kind of the unsung, uh, you know, literally. aspect of a show because Thank you. literally we say unsung. Every day. <laughs> because we go it's... around the theater reminding everybody that that truth, you, you know, the book is the unsung hero of, of the musical. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not what gets recorded maybe on the cast album uh, that people replay over and over, but and yet it's so important to hold it all together. What has this experience been like making that? you know, supporting a, a score and interweaving that versus your other uh, jobs writing scripts. Oh, you, Amber's looking at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 it goes back to, you can't hurt your feet. It's, it's, it, you have to have a, a thick skin. Um, you just sort of learn that what, you know, some of your best things are gonna get gobbled up and 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 turned into a song sometimes you have the ability and one of the great things about working with mark and scott is they were so that not only were they willing they were genuinely desired um for the the score to really emerge organically from the book and so you know you know the songs the songs it wasn't like you know you go in your room and i'll go in mine and we'll go and meet in the middle and see how well it fits together you know a lot of the songs in the show came from conversations from the very beginning with mark and scott about what was necessary in the in for the character what was necessary in, for the plot and so um you you i learned from my first time writing a book you and i think amber i'm sure your experience in television sort of prepared you for this, which is like, you just can't be precious about anything. You can't, um, because the thing you love most, you'll you'll eventually <laughs> lose. And then the thing that you thought for a, in a million years wouldn't make it into the show was you hear it on opening night and you're like, well, son of a bitch, that got in, how'd that happen? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. yeah, writing the book of a musical is impossible work because you're not used to it. And the, there's nothing more specific. Like, I feel like having written for TV, having written for, um, you know, comedy shows and other, you know, Second City and stuff, all that 
comes in handy and you use all of it, but the skill you do not have is how you write the couple of lines that lead you into a song. God bless America. That was tough. It was that tough. Was the hard part. It's exactly um, the opposite. It is, it's a thing the writers have to write, but only the musicians know exactly yeah. what yeah. you know the activators are in those four lines to launch the song into where it needs to be. It's tough, man. That was the sometimes, most hard lesson. Sometimes we would say to Casey, just write the bad version and give it to us, and we'll write the good version helping you get into the song, or we'll try to write the good version to the end of the song. That was for the for the two newbies here. That was that was like that was that was tough. And then I was just wanted to also mention that the greatest advice that I got when I started to work on this project was from Terrence McNally, who said to me that um, people think that writing the book of a musical is playwriting light, and it isn't. It is nothing whatsoever to do with playwriting. He says, take everything you know about writing plays and shuck it out the window, and and just, you have to learn from scratch. And mm -hmm. um, I think if he hadn't given me that a bit of advice that, that I probably would have had several months, if not years of, of frustration, but because that was like the first, and anything Terrence told me, I, I, I listened to, um, that was just, I, okay, great. I can expect the unexpected and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, you, you can't compare it to any other kind of writing I've learned um, at all. No, no other medium, screenwriting, television writing, playwriting, there's nothing that prepares you for, um, yeah, how much, that's the other thing, Amber, just like how much material got chewed up and spit out, you know, and like didn't make it, didn't make it past an afternoon um, or 17 versions of an approach to something. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's, um, you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's just like, you should just really leave your ego at the door, which is hard to do sometimes because we all have egos, you know, and we want it to be good and, um, I think sometimes you get frustrated with yourself too because you're just sort of like, you know you're not yet there and oh. <laughs> is the end in sight. <laughs> yeah. A long process. Well, if um, you know, if that's kind of talking about the the toughest part of the job, uh, before we have to wrap up, what what would you say would be the biggest, most pleasant surprise of this type of work? Amber Ruffin can sing. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Lopez can lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I think for me, Matthew Lopez was the biggest surprise because uh -huh. I'm telling you, we had a blast. We had so much fun. We're goofing around, having a lovely yeah. time while doing this like big, scary, serious thing. Just also partying down. Partying down. Well, okay, we should say that we met on Zoom because we started working together on this during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we, for several months, were never in a room together. We didn't meet in person for, I think maybe at least six or seven months into into, into our, our collaboration. And we would, um, we, you know, we were like in lockdown and, and you were, Amber, you were in the city, I think maybe, or you were just outside of the city and I was at, in upstate New York. And we would just like pen pal the script to each other. Like I would do, like I would, I would like do a draft and then just send it to Amber and Amber would take a draft and do it. Like we, instead of like, because we just sort of, I guess we maybe just sort of instinctively knew that like that kind of collaboration wasn't going to happen over Zoom. So it was basically like, here's my draft. Okay, now here's my draft and just trading drafts back and forth until we got into a room, which is then all, <laughs> it felt like all productivity ended for a time because we, <laughs> we just, we get very silly together and 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 sometimes it yields good things and sometimes it just yields wasted time. Roll the dice. Roll the dice buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm being bad. Can we write it down or not? <laughs> we made each other laugh. <laughs> well, I think you made audiences laugh plenty too. Uh, it's a hysterical show, so the work is worth it. Um, thank you both for sitting down with me. Everyone see some like it hot on Broadway. Stay subscribed to Gold Derby. Keep in touch with us throughout this season. And Amber, Matthew, thank you so much. I, can we just do like 10 more minutes of this from Amber? This is, <laughs> now you're getting an idea of what the last several years of my life was like. How could, I mean, what I learned is that Amber Ruffin is like 
like, I, come on. I mean, you really just like, it's a shame that she doesn't have a cable access <laughs> channel like of her own, her own show. Like, look at this. Or a, a you, solo Broadway show a, a coming solo soon. solo Broadway show, Amber. Amber. But it's no just, words, just that. You heard it here first. But it's just 90 minutes of Amber doing this. It's, it's not a great show. But <laughs> oh, oh, it, it closes opening night, no doubt. But yeah, so you gotta get a top, it's a real hot ticket.